Hi, Emmy. I thought you'd love this one and everyone else who wants to have a look at this. Belly pork. Okay, belly pork slices. Incredibly cheap. Um, if you are buying belly pork slices, get yourself into the supermarket and look for lean belly pork. Some is really, really fatty. If you go and get the ones with less fat on, they do need some fat because you cook them slowly, but you really don't want it all fat and less meat. So you look for a good one. Price, incredible. £4, 6p. Um, this will probably, this will feed three tonight. Uh, really good value and super tasty. Super easy as well. Okay, let's go. So red onion quickly. You can use white onion, don't worry about it. Just you don't even have to be very um, dainty on this because it all sort of cooks gently in the oven. What you do need is, well mine's an old fashioned roast, roasting dish. You probably don't even know what one of these looks like. But you can put it in something like that. Put foil over the top. It does need to have the foil over the top to keep in the juices that you're roasting in. Okay, just a thought guys. If you've got, like I have here, this is an electric pressure cooker, which I absolutely love. I don't probably use it as much as I do because uh, I, like everyone else today, I'm working full time. I cover 50 hours a week. So meals have to be quick, tasteful, nutritious. This is a great help. Uh, winter time, I tend to use it more, but you can definitely do belly pork in this. Uh, in this. The very fact that I'm choosing to do mine in the oven tonight is because we're gonna have ours with good old fashioned Yorkshire puddings. So why put that on when I've got the oven on anyway? So that's, but if it cuts the cooking time down probably, oh my God, you could do belly pork slices in this in 20 minutes where they're gonna go into the oven and sit there for at least an hour. So for economy wise, yes, that's the way to go. Um, I'm not altogether sure whether I think the flavour develops as well, but try it and see. If you've got one of these, that's definitely the most economical way forward. Okay, right, still on with just finally slicing up the. This is not a flat, this is not a chinois, this is not a dice, it's just cutting into slices that are going to render down quite nicely in the roasting tin. Like I said, this, this roasting tin is probably 30 years old. I don't know, you probably still can get them on, on Amazon. Very, very old fashioned, but I absolutely love it. Okay, and it's this simple, guys. Open the packet, put your pork on top. Your belly pork slices are going on top of the onions. And, be, and look at that, how lean is that? Can't beat waitress for good meat. And no, I'm not being paid by Waitrose. Uh, that's slightly more fatty. If you really want to, you could, as I'm going to do, cook some of that away. So if you do get pieces that are, well, hang on, this is going to take a better knife than what I've got there. Let me get my good knife. Like I say, I like a little bit of fat for flavour, texture. I don't like too much. Right, that's a much better trim on there. There's some nice meat there, so I'm actually going to trim that away as well. So that, as you can see, that is the fat that's left. Okay, in my grandmother's day, that would have been rendered down for dripping. I'm not quite that desperate. I am just about that old, but I'm not that desperate. Okay, I'm going to put a splash of water in there now. I mean, you know, we don't need a lot here. We just, just tad more. It's not even coming up to the side of the pot. It's more a case of the onions are going to burst and the pork juices and that little bit of water. I am, however, going to give it a little season. Rock salt, any salt will do. Don't give it too much though. So we've just seasoned it. We've got our salt and pepper on there. And we're just going to put this funny looking old lid on. Like I say, it's 20 plus years old. That goes on. It's got dents in it, which looks very strange. But I was told by my grandmother that that sort of all the moisture that goes onto there drips back onto your pork. 
I don't know. All I know is it does a beautiful job. Okay, into the oven. That's going to go in there for at least, I say an hour, at which point I lift the lid, I take the pork out, and I take the onions and gravy, and I put them separate into another pan to make a really nice onion gravy. I put the pork back into the roasting dish, and I let that continue to then crisp up and get kind of that nice roasted look that we all like when we see our meat. I will show you that a bit later. Bye for now. Uh, right, we're back. Okay, the pork is technically cooked. I've separated, this was the tin, I've separated the pork, there's the red onions, from the stock and the onions. Put it into the lid of the tin. As you can see, it doesn't look very pretty at the moment. It's pale, it's insipid, but it's beautifully tender and moist. So my next job is, totally as it is, it's going in the oven to brown up just for probably 15 minutes, okay? So that goes back in. That's gonna sit there, get a little bit crispy, nice color to it. In the meantime, I'm boiling up the vegetables. We've got new potatoes, we've got green beans in here. I'm gonna add some of the juice, some of the water, I should say, from the potatoes. I'm gonna add some of the stock from the green beans into this when they're ready. I will bring this to heat take my whisk and all I'm going to do this this is actually this smells beautiful it's got the red onions it's got all the juices from the pork it's got the seasoning we're not going to add any more stock to that that's perfect but what we are going to do is we need a thickener uh, many years ago you used to get gravy browning and as I grew up I was taught to get the gravy browning which would give it colour add it to plain flour a little bit of cold water and you'd mix a thick paste and you would add that to your stock pan and that would make your brown gravy. Um, I still today when I'm doing a chicken pan, if I take a chicken out of a roasting pan and I've got lots of nice sauces, quite often I'll just add a spoonful of plain flour to it, stir it in making sure you get no lumps and then add a little bit of water, thin it down, bring it to simmer, add some vegetables and um, water stock to it and you've got yourself the flour thickens the gravy naturally. Today we're doing shortcuts and you guys quite honestly I can't see you wanting to start making gravy with flour and things. It can go very wrong. You can end up with a mass of lumps. So today we're just going to, when this gets to the right heat, I've got my other flavours in. I'm going to put a tablespoonful of beef gravy granules in. Now it's not pork gravy granules. That's absolutely fine. It makes it, the pork is quite a strong flavour that's in there. It makes a cracking gravy to go with your Yorkshire puddings, your potatoes and your green beans. Oh, we also have cauliflower as well. Um, so you don't need to get hung up today on uh, making a real gravy. But there's nothing nicer at Christmas if you actually know how to, to use the turkey stock you've got. Um, to be able to know what to do with your plain flour and how to treat it. So one of these days when I'm roasting a joint or roasting a chicken, I will make you... Uh, a very true gravy. I wouldn't call it a sauce, some of the top chefs call them sauces. To me, the gravy's gravy. If it comes off a bird or a piece of meat, it's a gravy. Unless you add in red wine or sherries, then you turn them into a sauce. Those sauces can be thickened with butter. There's very di different agents you use to thicken sauces. But um, I will teach you to make a basic gravy using flour and water paste from plain flour. Never ever try using self-raising flour you'll just get a big lumpy gooey mess in your gravy okay guys be back shortly when the pork's brown right um i'm heating up the onions and pork stock i've just put a little bit more i've already put some potato water in there just feel it needs a little bit more i want that nice and hot a little bit of the green beans that's it right because most of your nutrients are I like generally to steam vegetables, but when I'm not, most of the nutrients go into the water, so it's kind of good if you can use that water up. Right, okay, I'm just gonna, let's get a tablespoon, guys, so you know what I'm doing here. Uh, I can pretty much guess a lot of things. It comes just comes with experience. But to help you guys out, it's probably better if we do it by tablespoons. Right. I would say that's two rounded ones. 
and I think that should be fine. So it's just coming up to heat already. That is taking a different look. It's starting to thicken. Okay. Yeah, I know that may have looked, I'm just thinking about this, may have looked like I put three tablespoonfuls in. Actually, they weren't rounded tablespoonfuls. They were just like half measures. So that's why I'm saying to you, I don't want you to put too much in. It's better when you're making gravy using these granule things to put less in and then you can always go back and thicken it by putting more in. If you put too much in, you're then going to end up thinning your stock down, thinning down what you've got with more water and you just lose a lot of your flavours. I'm just going to taste this. Always, always taste your flavours. Know what you're doing. Sometimes, you know, you might taste it and think, actually, there's not enough flavour there. I'm going to grab some lean parents, put something in to give it a little support. Oh, that is lush. Okay, so next step, we're going to put our pork. Now we're going to get the belly pork out of the oven. Should be just a nicely browned, ready to go in there. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. So we're just going to beautifully tender, falling apart. That's just going to go in there and finish off its cooking so it gets, make sure it's nicely. It flavours the meat, uh, or sort of, sort of like the meat flavours the gravy really. But it's kind of, it's nice to serve the pork that's been in the gravy. The flavours, well, the flavours are what they are. Pork and onions, delicious. You can, of course, anyone who, there are a lot of people today, actually can't tolerate onions. Well, you can just make a stock gravy. There's no problem with that. Okay, I'm just going to turn that down. And that's it basically. I'm going to drain the vegetables. I'm just going to pop some Yorkshire puddings. Again, they're frozen. I've been at work, for God's sake. You don't want to be coming in. And I may, I, when I do make homemade Yorkshire puddings, I actually love them. It's, it's really fulfilling um, to put your Yorkshire pudding mix into your super, super hot tins and see them just come up like that. They are far better than the frozen ones. But when you push for time, why kill yourself for, you know, they're very cheap, they're very easy. They're not as good, but they're a good second. So, okay. I hope you give this a go. Very easy dish. Thank you. Bye.